Ooh, new processors from Intel? How exciting. After that absolute spanking they got from AMD, they gotta bring builders back into the fold. Wonder what these new CPUs can offer you as a DIY builder? Let's find out. This is DIY in 5. Hello everyone, I'm Trisha Hirschberger and in this video we'll be going over Intel's 10th generation CPUs and what this new tech means for all of you DIY PC builders at home. If you find the tips in today's video useful, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future tech tips. Start up your coolers because Intel's 10th gen CPUs are available now, offering not only faster clock speeds, but also better connectivity, graphics processing power, and they even have built-in intelligent features to learn and adapt to how you use your PC to deliver more power where you need it most. With features like Intel Optane Memory, Intel Wi-Fi 6, Thunderbolt 3 technology, 4K HDR, and clock speeds up to 5.3 gigahertz, and the cool code name Comet Lake, this 10th gen is the creme de la creme. So what does this mean for the DIY builder? Well, for starters, we'll be getting faster speeds at better prices. The new i3 essentially has the same specs as the last four core flagship i7 7700K from four years ago. That's nutters. We also have hyper-threading, which pretty much doubles the processing threads for a single CPU core, enabled on every new offering. That means whatever price point you're shopping, you can get a hyper-threaded CPU, also Nutters. And frankly, it is this Nutters hyper-threading tech that allows this new 10th gen i3 to rival the 7th gen i7. Now, the 9th gen Intel CPUs only had hyper-threading tech on the i9 processors, so why the change of heart? We can probably thank AMD's Ryzen for that, given the smattering of competition they've thrown Intel's way with their latest chipset. This is a case where competition is very good for the consumer. Now, because these new CPUs are doing so much more work, Intel has opted to use a thinner die coupled with soldered thermal interface material, or STEM, and a thicker integrated heat spreader on some of the higher end 10th gen CPUs. Translation? Better cooling equals improved performance and more overclocking potential. Huzzah! Sounds awesome. So what's the downside? For starters, if you want in on the 10th gen CPU action, you'll need to upgrade your motherboard, since we're dealing with a brand new chip socket, the LGA200. At least you can still use old LGA1151 CPU coolers, right? Small victory? <laughs> Tons of new motherboards were announced with expanded feature sets like increased USB 3.2 Gen 2 support, more Thunderbolt ports, etc. The one thing you can't get with this new combo? PCIe Gen 4. I know, some of the new Z490 motherboards even support it, but the CPUs don't, so it won't help you at the moment, but is a good consideration for future proofing. If you need more info on PCIe Gen 4, feel free to check out the video we made all about it by clicking the link in the description. Here in the Kingston Studios, we're playing with the idea of doing our own build with the Gigabyte Vision D board and 10th gen CPUs. This board is specifically aimed at creators with a triple M.2 thermal guard, front and rear USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C connectivity, and more. Let us know in the comments if a build of that nature is something you'd be interested in seeing, and maybe it can be a future DIY in five. Who knows? Other cool boards for these new 10th gen CPUs include mini ITX boards, higher efficiency mobile boards, gamer specific boards, etc. Intel has self-proclaimed 10th gen the world's fastest gaming processor, and I'm just stoked to see if it lives up to the hype. All right, I feel like I have now gone off on a tangent. What are you excited to see in this next gen of Intel processors and new motherboards? Have any of you done a build with this new tech now that it's out in the wild? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this episode of DIY in 5, and I'll see you next time. Bye.